Hi, and welcome to plcguru.gurus.net's uh, YouTube channel. Um, if you like what you see in this video and you want to see more videos, please click the subscribe button. Uh, also, if you like and you find this video useful, please click the like button. Um, and I do want to mention that we do run a blog site at www.plcgurus.net. So I invite all of you to, to head on over there, and there's a link in the YouTube video here. Um, to get you there um, and subscribe and become a member an active member of our community and contribute wherever you can uh, okay so today what we're going to do is we're going to i'm going to show you how to configure rs links to communicate to legacy type controllers so these are your sleep family um, your plc fives if you still have those around um, and even some older logix uh, controllers and that's what actually I'm going to be using is the 1756-L61. Any controller that still has that onboard uh, nine-pin serial um, communication port. Okay, so as you know, most PCs on the market in the last, I don't know, probably five years almost, um, no longer support the the, the nine-pin D-sub serial connection. Um, so what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go ahead and get yourself one of these USB to serial converter cables. I have one right here. This one happens to be a pluggable one. Let me see if you can see that. It's upside down. Okay. Anyways, you can just do a Google search on these, and they're fairly inexpensive. You can find them probably for about 15 bucks. And you're also going to need to get one of these null modem cables. So this is a female to female null modem. Uh, you don't have to go out and spend $400 on a an Allen Bradley RS-232 cable. Um, you can get one of these again online for probably about 15 bucks. Um, yeah, so let's just get right into it. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in my serial USB to serial converter cable and plug the other end of the null modem into the serial port on my ControlLogic CPU. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to head on over to the control panel. We want to go to Device Manager. And if you haven't installed the driver for your USB to serial converter cable, Please go ahead and do so before you, you, you get here. And you can see here it showed up on COM3. Okay, so we're going to need to know that for our RSLINKS configuration. So I'm going to go ahead and close this off and launch RSLINKS. Again, RSLINKS is a free download um, from Rockwell and it, will, it provides all the communication drivers in order to communicate to the various controllers. Okay, so let's go to communications. We're going to configure drivers. And under the available driver types drop down, you want to go ahead and select the RS-232 DF1 devices driver. You'll click add new. And you can give it a unique name if you like. I do recommend that you do change this, um, especially if you're in a, a facility that has multiple controllers, multiple cells, etc. It, it provides a mechanism to organize your links drivers into logical and meaningful um, categories I guess okay so I'm just gonna use the default I'm gonna click OK and you're gonna be confronted with this dialog screen so the first thing you'll want to do here is you'll want to go and put this to the COM port that we looked at in device manager so that happened to be COM port 3 and there are a bunch of different options here but with any luck we can hit this magic auto configure button and it will set all of these settings for us so let's go ahead and do that and there you go. So it says auto configuration successful. It is changing the device type to a Logix 5550 family, compact Logix, and set all the appropriate BOD and, you know, error checking and parity, etc. So we can just click OK now, click close, and we'll head on over and start browsing that DF1 driver. Again, you know it's browsing because you see this windowing happening here. And there we go. We have the L61. So a direct point-to-point -point connection to that CPU. And if I expand that, I can drill through and get to the backlane and see all of the different modules connected to my chassis. So you can see I only have the, uh, the Ethernet bridge module here as well. Okay, so um, if you like this video and you found it useful, please, uh, please again click the like and subscribe to the channel. And I do encourage you again to head over to our uh, blog site at www.plcgurus.net and join our community there. Um, so I hope you found this video informative and any questions, please post them in the comment section below and I'll be sure to answer them. Thank you and have a nice day.